dielectric videos. Now I haven't made a video in a few months now, as some of you who are subscribed to my channel have probably noticed. And the reason for that is, I have been constructing this beast here. This is the Deflectron AB, a hollow state amplifier, meaning tube amplifier, based entirely around the 6DQ6B vacuum tube. Just like, just like the one that uh, I demonstrated in my first tube amplifier video a few months ago, uh, which I will link over on the uh, annotation here. Now this is also based on the ECL85 uh, combination triode pentode, which is uh, operating as a preamp and a phase inverter, and it's configured in a push-pull class AB configuration, as the name AB would imply. The name deflectron actually came from the type of tube that is operating here, the for, uh, horizontal deflection tube for use in televisions. And one of the coolest things I think about this tube is it's a $4 tube. You can get these online or at brick and mortar uh, tube and, uh, and surplus warehouses for 4 to $5 a piece, which is a sure heck of a lot better than the th multi-thousand dollar tubes that you can find uh, on the audiophile grade online shops for these things. Now the uh, 60Q6Bs are coupled to a couple of uh, kind of miscellaneous no-name output transformers. The whole thing is driven off a 460 volt B plus rail provided by this 240 volt and 120 volt transformer which are cascaded in uh, series connection on the DC side. And the filament and bias voltages are provided in combination by these two 12.6 volt with center tap filament transformers. Now I'll show you the key features of the front uh, panel. The label, which is uh, laser cut at Arizona State University's uh, 3D printing and laser cutting lab. A set of clip lights to indicate when the amplifier is being overdriven, which of course is uh, for a 20 watt per channel amplifier, which is what this is, the clip is uh, almost at inaudible volume levels. I mean, it's uh, you really have to crank this thing hard to get it to, to go to clip. But uh, when it does clip, these lights blink. This is a, a very simple tone control. It's more or less just a high cut, high pass. I usually keep it at high noon, which is uh, evenly high cutting and high passing, or ultimately keeping the audio in its native format. And the volume control, a logarithmic potentiometer to optimize uh, the responsiveness of the uh, rotation of the knob. The power switch and power light, of course, self-explanatory. Now on the back, of the amplifier. There's a few more extra uh, outputs and components that I can show you. There's a uh, two speaker outputs for the left and right side. They're designed for four to eight ohm impedance speakers, but experience shows that this amp will drive into just about anything with quite nice fidelity. Uh, I find that a six ohm speaker does uh, pretty well on this configuration. The line in RCA ports, the fuse, the power input, 105 to 125 volts AC with 115 volts nominal. And this switch is a ground lift switch. You can turn this to ground or to lift depending on whether you want the negative rail of the circuit to be bonded to earth ground via this input or if you prefer for it to be lifted and have the ground rail floating. Now uh, I'll show you underneath it. All right, I'm back to show you the underside of the amplifier where all the nuts and bolts and circuitry is located. Now the reason I had to have that cut gap just then was uh, I have a for service call and my phone number listed here, so I wanted to obfuscate that to make sure no uh, spammers or other nefarious characters get a hold of my number. But as you can see, this uh, amplifier has a uh, safety plexiglass cover plate with vent holes over the two main drive boards held in place by a piece of uh, reflective tape, and it tells you warning 450 volts inside, just as fair warning to anyone who hasn't worked with tube amplifiers uh, so they don't go prodding around in there. Now some key features that you can see, my two main bridge rectifiers, these are 400 volt rated bridge rectifiers uh, driving the circuit. Um, the first one, of course, is for rectifying the 260 or 240 volt AC input to the provide the 260 volt DC rail. And the second one rectified the 120 volts to provide an additional uh, voltage that raises the uh, tube plate voltage to 450 volts for the power stage. Now, as you can imagine, uh, that doesn't exactly follow the square root of two RMS to peak ratio. And that's because the circuit draws enough current to pull that down from the nominal voltages. Now I have the uh, 
the 260 volt rail driven through a, an inductor, a choke, and then to a set of a bank of capacitors with a resistor in between in order to provide a relatively low ripple uh, plate voltage for the preamplifier circuits. Now the preamps are driven internally on these two drive boards for the left and right side and they effectively go uh, up to these front tubes via some uh, ribbon cable and uh, these front tubes then preamplify and also phase invert the signal in order to provide the push and pull uh, components to run the power stages. Now the power stages are pentodes so their screen voltages need to be set manually by, uh, by the circuitry on these boards so the screen voltages and grid driving circuits are also located on these boards. Now here is the tone stack. It's very simple, just high cut, high pass, uh, along with a set of Zener clamps so that if one of the tubes uh, shorts plate to grid, it'll blow the fuse on this board before doing any damage to your audio equipment that's plugged in. Now the last thing I'll point out on here is this board here. Uh, this board is the biasing voltage supply board. It has a discrete diode rectifier and it rectifies the filament voltage uh, filament voltages from the filament transformers in order to provide a minus 30 volt rail underneath the zero volt ground and using a Zener diode, a minus 2.5 volt rail for the preamps. Now those allow me to uh, do a hard uh, fixed bias configuration of these rather than a cathode bias configuration. And when I get into the uh, circuit diagram analysis, I will show you that hard biasing and all the other techniques that I've used to design this amplifier from scratch. Now, without further ado, I'll move on to the uh, circuit diagram configuration. Uh, if you want to just skip ahead, if you're not interested in seeing that, you, skip, you can skip ahead to the end of this video and uh, see this thing actually in action playing some music. Otherwise, uh, stay tuned and I will show you the circuit diagram. So on to the circuit diagram. Now this was, uh, I've made a few changes over the course of designing this amplifier. Really it was quite a trial and error process. And the design I've ultimately come down to uh, is, will be covered on this section of the video. Now I'm starting with the back side of my design paper. This is the power supply. And as I already mentioned, I have four transformers handling power. I have two filament transformers, each 12.6 volts with a center tap meaning 6.3 volts in between each, uh, across each coil. And each one goes to a separate pair or single heater on one of the tubes. Now all of these are connected in series and rectified to give my minus 30 volts, uh, plus or minus 10% supply for the power tubes to, to bias their grids. And that, uh, this 2K resistor and 2.5 volt Zener diode also yield a minus 2.5 volt ultra low ripple signal for biasing the grids on the preamplifier. Now a quick a word on biasing grids, which I'll talk about more in a second, but the only way a vacuum tube can work effectively uh, in its intended operating range is if the grid actually has a lower, more negative voltage than the cathode. This prevents electrons from the cathode from just spewing off at full speed towards the grid and then on towards the plate. So to get my high voltage supply, I have a 240 volt AC, 100 uh, volt amp transformer and 120 volt isolation transformer as well, uh, coupled to a set of uh, silicon bridge rectifiers and connected in series to yield a 260 volt low ripple output uh, supply and a 450 volt low or uh, non, not highly regulated, but still somewhat capacitively filtered supply for the power tubes. Now I'll show you in a minute why it's not quite so critical that this be low ripple compared to that. Now this is considered low ripple because I have a 100 millihenry choke or uh, inductor in series with this, followed by a 47 microfarad capacitor, a subsequent dropper resistor, 150 ohm, and three more 47 microfarad capacitors. Even with all of this filtering, there is still some audible hum on the output signal, and I'll talk more about that and how I may improve that in future designs. Now as to the power input, I have my hot uh, line going through an 8 amp fuse, the power switch on the front, and then on to the rest of the circuit. Neutral goes straight to the transformers, and my ground lift is just a switch connecting ground to my zero volts if I so desire. Now let me flip this over, and hopefully get the framing right. Let me just adjust the camera slightly. 
Anyway, here is the design for the actual amplifier stage. Now, you see for the left and right, it's effectively identical copies, so I'll just focus on one side here. In fact, I'll even move the camera a little bit closer so you can see the detail a bit better. So here are my two 60Q6B power stage tubes, each biased with minus 30 volts and a 100K resistor. Now one of the reasons why it's not so critical that the biasing or plate voltage for the power tubes be extremely low ripple is because as long as the two uh, ripple signals are in phase, these two tubes are pulling evenly across this output transformer and thus are not going to produce any noticeable hum or distortion on the output stage. Now this is a class AB amplifier, the B being a push-pull characteristic wherein one of these tubes pulls this plus 450 volts from the center tap of the output transformer across and down to ground when the other is releasing that, uh, that current. And then in, parallel, or in, uh, in opposition on the other side of the audio sine wave, this one pulls and this one pushes, allowing the 450 volts to go in this direction to ground as well. Now with these two valves working in unison, you can achieve relatively high power outputs now, I've only driven this to 20 watts per channel. I really have not utilized the 60Q6B quite to its full potential. However, I found that uh, to reduce the amount of interference on the line, it is generally a good idea to not have too much gain through the entire amplifier. Too much gain, you'll tend to get hum and, and hiss and other undesirable characteristics. So for a good balance between fidelity and performance, I chose 20 watts per channel. Now I have my, cap, or have my screens biased using a voltage divider with a bypass cap to ground. This makes sure that uh, any AC signals are not imposed on the screen when the audio is playing. And you'll see that's mirrored on this other side identically. And uh, both the screen and grid drives both have 1K stopper resistors on them to prevent any spurious oscillation or high frequency resonance in the circuit. Now onto the preamplifier stage. I have the same plate configuration on the preamp uh, pentode here. Uh, my input line is connected to the tone stack via a 10K stopper resistor with a 2 nanofarad uh, bleeder cap to prevent any high frequency oscillation. Now this goes to a 10K uh, resistor. This is operating in class A, meaning it's only operating as a, uh, as a basically a center line class A amplifier where the signal is uh, the signal is not pushing or pulling into anything, it's operating continuously at full power through this resistor and being modulated up and down through the uh, signaling. Now the output goes directly to the tube amp through, or through the, to the power tube via a 450 volt 10 microfarad decoupling capacitor and additionally is split off through another capacitor to a voltage divider attenuator and is fed right back into the grid of, this, uh, of the triode stage of the preamp and that gives the inverted output using this 60K uh, load resistor, and that's sent to this tube. So when one of these fires, when one of these goes highly positive, it's gonna influence this other tube to go highly negative and pull the other tube in the opposite direction. That operates the uh, push-pull topology. Now the last thing I'll show you is my especially simple uh, tone stack, which is basically just a bypass, a uh, couple of bypass 10 nanofarad capacitors on the front end. This one lets more high frequency in through, uh, only the high frequencies can pass through this capacitor, comes directly in off the front uh, and into the circuit, and then this one grounds out any high frequencies from the circuit. So depending on where this potentiometer is set, you either lose high frequencies or you gain extra high frequencies. That's the tone control. Now it's set nominally with a 3.3K impedance, which is fairly low for a front end, but uh, most uh, audio sources and computer and cell phone audio lines will have no trouble driving a 3.3k uh, load. My volume control is simply a 10k logarithmic potentiometer shunting that to ground. And I have a fuse and a pair of anti-parallel uh, anti or uh, anti-serial Zener diodes connected so that if either side of the wave exceeds 3 volts, it'll be shunted to ground. And if something goes, goes wrong in the tube and high voltage leaks back into here, it'll flow through here and blow the fuse before doing any damage to the audio, or to the audio driver. All right, so I have a set of Pioneer speakers connected to this amplifier now. Now, before I uh, play music on it, let me preface this by saying that the sound that you hear out of your speakers or headphones will probably not be quite realistic of what it actually sounds like 
due to the limitations of my microphone, the acoustics of the room, and the limitations of YouTube's compression format. So you'll have to take my word for it, it sounds pretty darn good, especially considering this is my first uh, real Class AB amplifier that I've really ever constructed, particularly the first one I've ever constructed using vacuum tubes. So without further ado, I will power it on. Now for about 30 seconds you won't hear anything because as you know with uh, vacuum tubes, the filaments have to heat up so that the cathodes become emissive. For the first 20 to 30 seconds, it doesn't produce any sound. So we'll wait a little bit more and it should be pretty close to warmed up by now. So I'm going to go over to my computer and I'm going to play uh, an excerpt from NCS called Mortals by Wario. Here he goes. <laughs> So there you go, that's a good sample of what this system sounds like. The highs are crisp, the mids are powerful, the bass is, pr is highly present, clear, it doesn't rattle the speakers. So this ultimately, for my first try, I was extremely surprised with how well this turned out. Uh, I'm actually planning in the future on uh, producing several more of these using a printed circuit board rather than the perf boards that I used to assemble this one. And uh, I have a, actually, I have a PCB in the works that I may feature on a future video. So uh, I'm not selling them commercially yet, but in the future, it may be uh, that I end up starting a little uh, startup company to sell these or to sell kits to manufacture these. And I will keep you guys posted if uh, they go up for sale or if uh, anybody on the, who watches my YouTube channel is interested in uh, acquiring one of these. So thank you for watching Dielectric Videos, thank you for listening to the Deflectron AB Amplifier, and I will see you next time.